Hello everyone, nice to have you all back for another episode of our 107 channel. You might have noticed this disassembled instrument cluster of my 107. Over here the odometer, right here before me, the quadruple instrument, oil pressure, fuel level, engine temperature, economic mode of driving, well, mostly not. Over here, sitting on its back, the fourfold module, speedometer, mileage counter, clock and rev counter. I had to detach the clock from my instrument cluster, it did not work no longer. In most cases, this is because of two reasons. The soldering point has cracked and current flow is interrupted, or the condensators are blown or both. Please see top drown picture on the right hand side. How to repair that without damaging other components is today's topic. We will disassemble the cluster. There is a certain order to be respected to avoid damage. Only certain screws need to be unscrewed. Do not touch other screws because they keep other components in one piece. I have learned my lesson the hard way. Few tools are needed to disassemble the cluster. Couple of Phillips, a socket size 6, a small ratchet, soldering equipment, that's about it. We start unbolting these four screws first. We now unbolt the module of the clock and rev counter. All modules have been detached over here on the right the quadruple module fuel level 
oil pressure, engine temperature. Once the three principal modules have been detached, we can dismantle this black plastic housing a little more. We unbolt these two nuts, size 6, to take out the plastic screen for a wipe and to dust the housing where direction indicators, hazard bulb and others are sitting. Once detached, we can clean the two screens of the rectangular control panels as well. Here we have the two covers with all sorts of symbols which are illuminated from the rear end with bulbs. They need a wipe as well. The screen, let's call it the visor, needs a wipe for sure. You can see all the dust. We now detach the clock from the right hand assembly. Just use a Philips, please see enlarged picture on the left hand side. Here we are, this is probably the cause for malfunctioning, the wire fell off. We can take it out easily, wire lost contact to soldering point. Let us try a new resistance, I already inserted it from the top, the feet, I have put them through the holes already. You don't need to have to worry about polarity, with such small capacitors it does not matter. The feet protrude on the lower side of the panel. I simply have to solder them to the connecting points, then we reconnect the clock and see if it works.
The old capacitors are kind of brownish in color and probably shot for sure. The first of the old capacitors, brownish in color right here, looks shot to me. The new ones can take more heat by far. With these capacitors, polarity does matter. The longer foot is always plus. You can see here where the minus current conducting path runs, it is clearly marked. So if I slide the feet through the holes, the plus foot should be outside at the far left. I now bend the feet to keep the capacitor in place, a job for a watchmaker for sure. I now solder it to the panel without touching other current conducting paths. See this? Watch the green cogwheel moving to the left, so both capacitors and resistance were shot. As mentioned before, capacitors and resistance were all shot. When testing the clock for functioning, never never use your car battery, but an external power unit with 12 volt. When reassembling the modules in the cluster, be careful not to touch any wires or touch some metal housing to cause a short circuit. If so, you would have to repair a lot more. Therefore, it is highly advised to test the clock with an external power source of 12 volts. Do not blame it on me if you screw it up. If you don't want to waste your time with jobs like this, contact me send the entire cluster to me and I will get it done for you. And simply send it back to you. See you around next time for another episode. Thank you for watching. Bye bye everybody.